Let's take a quick look at some of the control room functionality found in Nuendo 7. The control rooms are very powerful and allows you to do monitor control, cue mixes, as well as metering. The control room is kind of an underlying part of the program. So if at times if you notice that your play tool isn't sounding when you think it should, or if you audition sound effects and you don't hear them, that's often because they're being sent through the control room to the listen bus. The control room is set up in your devices menu by going to the VST connections or by hitting F4. We see our input tab, our output tab. Now one thing to be aware of is that we want the outputs to be defined but not physically connected to the audio interface. Otherwise, we risk the possibility of double busing the signal. Uh, there's a preference that can help mitigate this problem. So if you go to the preferences under VST to control room, we could have a couple preferences, and one of them is exclusive device ports for monitor channels. So if you find yourself where you, maybe you need to set up a double a connection that's being defined in multiple destinations, what you could do is just simply toggle that preference if you're not uh, able to. But you could also have the control room volume active by default in the transport bar. So if I just wanted to come here and use this transport uh, volume slider right there, I could use that for my control room. So what we want to do now is go to the Studio tab. In the Studio tab, first thing we want to do is to turn on the control room. So probably the first thing we want to set up is going to be our monitor source. So if I go to my monitors, I'll say, okay, I want to have my Yamaha monitors. You could just type in a name, a description. At this point, we could say, okay, I want this to be a mono, stereo, or a 5.1 setup. We will hit OK. And then we could now have our monitors. So what we want to do is to define the connections directly here in the monitors as opposed to the outputs once again. And if I wanted to add a cue mix, I could have four different cue mix. So say we have an actor named Huey. We could just have that or voiceover artist or drummer, whatever we want. And again, we take these outputs that could be sent to the headphone monitor system. And we could also have external inputs. So if I'm mixing a concert and it's in 5.1 surround sound and I want to use another DVD as a reference, I could just say, let's have our DVD as an external input. And we could also, especially handy in post-production, different monitor sources. So if I wanted to come here, we could just say, okay, I want to have all of my different stems or my inputs monitored or my outputs monitored, and we could have the setup. If I need to communicate with people in the recording studio from the control room, I could actually activate a talkback microphone. So it's just as simple as kind of defining what you want and then defining the connections. Now I have a preset created here, and you can see this kind of taken to the extreme, where I could have a talkback microphone, I have an iPad, a half inch tape machine, a DAT, two computers as external inputs. I could monitor my 5.1, my stereo out, uh, my sound effects, my vocal music and background stems. I have my four Q mixes as well as my four monitors. In addition to this, we have a metering channel. So if you have hardware external meters, we can just simply route the signal directly out to your metering as well get an idea of what the control room actually looks like. So we could access it as an independent window directly from our devices menu. More commonly, we could access it from the mix console. So if I come here, we, and if we don't see it on the right hand side, we could click on the left hand side here, the upper left hand side, and activate the control room view from the main mix console. One of the main intentions of the control room is to have an independent monitoring source that doesn't affect the gain structure of the mixer. So as I play back audio, you notice that I could adjust the volume, but the gain structure here in my master fader is not affected by it. If I want to set a dim value, and that's, that value is set into preferences, or we could actually have a known reference level. So a lot of film people, for instance, like to mix it 85 dB. So if you've calculated your room, measured it, and you say this is 85 dB at my control room, I can now hold down the Alt key, and as we go, I can go to my known reference level. 
Now, many times when we're working with different tracks, we can solo particular tracks. So if we want to see what the tracks are doing. But sometimes I may want to hear it more in context with a particular track. So we have something called the listen bus. And we see this little L button here. So solo, you see our tracks. But when I click on L, the other tracks are just simply dimmed down. So as we work with this, we may want to also have control over the click track. So if we're doing a music track, we could activate the click track and the level of the click right here. Or if we're doing an ADR session where they need to hear beeps before they start the recording dialogue process, we could activate the click right there. Now we have different tabs that are visible. If we're working in surround, one of the things you may want to be cognizant of is the capability of being able to down mix. So if I wanted to listen to what the project was in 5.1 or stereo or mono, I could just have my down mix presets so that I could easily see what it's going to sound like on different listening environments. When we go to our channels, this allows me to solo different channels in my surround field. So if I only wanted to listen to a particular project uh, and only wanted to listen to the left speaker or add the right speaker or the center channel, take the LFE out, and in my surround. And there's some handy presets here. So if you wanted to solo just the left and right channels or bring the surround channels to the front or just solo the surround channels. Now, earlier we had defined our different groups or stems. So if we come here, we could actually listen to our different monitor sources here. So as we were kind of playing back our projects, I could say, okay, I want to listen to the 5.1 mix, but let's say I just want to listen to sound effects or just music or dialogue or background. Now, if I could actually click this button, I could have different monitoring sources enabled right there. So if I wanted to do a quick M&E monitoring, I could just do that very easily. One of the things that's very powerful in Nuendo is this concept of having a monitor control. So I could have four different speaker sets set up and these could be surround, stereo, mono, and you could, and these are again, are connected directly to the output. So you're not gonna have any coloration of a hardware monitor control. But what you're able to do is say, okay, I want to switch between my Yamaha to my Gentle X to my Eves to my JBLs. And you could just simply switch or you could just choose to switch on our sources within the bottom part if that isn't visible. Now, sometimes you may run into situations where you have different amplifiers in different sets of speakers and you want to have a consistent monitoring level. If we go to the setup tab, and select our monitor, I could now have independent monitor level for each speaker so that when I do switch, that the different speakers will actually have a consistent monitoring level. And if I needed to put different effects plugins, if I wanted to put an EQ on this particular speaker, you could do that. If we wanted to use an external device as a reference, we can now click on the external tab and we could switch between our different external devices and click on the external button on the control room. So I could compare my mix to an external source very easily. We also have four independent cue mixes that could be available. These could be for musicians or for actors that are doing uh, voiceover work. So if I wanted to open up my cue section of my mixer, we can now select a number of different channels and say I needed to send these directly to my musicians at this point I could just say I want to take I want to enable the cue sends and then at this point for this I wanted to use the current mix levels for those particular tracks and then I'm able to adjust the if different volume levels for different tracks if necessary, but then I could do this easily for all of my different cue mixes. And then if I needed to, we could just go to our cue mix and if I could now listen to the different cue mixes 
that the different actors or musicians can hear. We could also pick and choose whether the metronome is being sent directly out to the QMix, whether they're hearing the talk back. So if I click the talk back here, my microphone that I defined in the VST connections can now be routed so that this person can hear the talk back, but maybe this person cannot. So you could have these individual settings so the person could hear the mix, their QMix, or the external reference source that you have as well. So if this is coming from an iPad and they wanted to get a feel for how this was said, you can now just kind of come here, listen to the external source or to the mix source. So very powerful control for your different QMixes. And if you need to have different plugins for the QMixes, you could click on a setup and at this point you could load up VST plugins directly into QMix if necessary. Control room is also the ideal area for metering control. So if I'm playing back my project, I could choose to see full digital scale, DIN, EBU, British, Nordic, CAT system 20, CAT system 14, 12. Sometimes you may want to see both the meter and the control room uh, volume control. And if you click on the CR button here, you get mini meters where you could switch between your different sources and see metering as well. One of the things that's really kind of taken over, especially in the broadcast industry, is loudness metering. So once we have the meter tab selected, we can now go to the loudness tab. And at this point, we could just adjust and see all of our loudness units or lofts, as some people call them. And we can see if we're going to be compliant and where our mix is sitting for our loudness unit standards. So as you can see, the control room in Nuendo 7 is incredibly comprehensive and powerful and solves many problems and replaces a lot of hardware.